All right, the Platte Valley Broncos are on the field. We'll start this game about uh, 12 minutes tardy. The B-Diggers basically have got to run the table this week to stay in contention for that second spot in the Patriot League after losing a couple of close Patriot League games, 3-1 to in Sterling, 1-0 to nothing at University. Of course, they lost at home to Valley, 21-10. to But then what they've done in the Patriot League when they've lost to those two other teams, they avenged those losses with victories. And that's going to be one of the keys for the B-Diggers coming up tomorrow. we got four games in four days as Brush and University will play tomorrow in Brush at 4 o'clock. And then coming up on Thursday, Brush and Platte Valley from Brush also at 4 o'clock. Christian Clear is at first. The second baseman is Colton Curbs. Ryan Perkins at third. The shortstop. Let's see, we'll get to the shortstop here momentarily for Platte Valley. I think I erroneously wrote it here in the Tanner Getman. Tanner Getman in short. Around the outfield, Easton Frannick is in left. The center fielder is Ryan Waite. And right is Clay Smith. Behind the plate is Isaiah Smith. And Zach Barker. The right-hander is on the hill. Opening pitch is brought to you by Ingmar Phillips Insurance. Locally in Fort Morgan and Brush. They can help you with your home, car, health, or life insurance questions or needs. Ingmar Phillips Insurance. And here's B.J. Hirschfeld. Hirschfeld having a pretty productive season out of the eight hole. Now he's in the one, hitting 367. And the pitch is a strike at the knees. No balls and one strike to Hirschfeld from the right-hander, Zach Barker. And the offering and the breaking ball is fouled behind the plate. Count moves to 0-2. Platte Valley with a victory with even a record at 7-7. and The B-Diggers are looking for their 10th victory of the year. Hirschfeld's got those old-fashioned stirrups. And the pitch. Upstairs, the fastball, ball one, strike two. Keep in mind, you can follow us pitch by pitch, KSRYRSports.com. Got a whole box score there for you. And the one-two offering, swung on and fouled off to the right on the breaking ball, and the count remains at one and two to B.J. Hurstfeld on an overcast Tuesday here in Kersey. We might have different weather conditions throughout the course of the game. It was sunny and warm when we got here, then overcast, windy and rainy at 3.30. And now starting... Here just over a minute ago, cloudy but dry. And this Platte Valley field from years past is much improved. For many years, they did not have any grass in the infield, and now they do. The offering swung on and grounded left side for a base hit. And the B-Diggers got a base hit there from B.J. Hirschfeld. His brush only had two hits in yesterday's game against University. One of those came from pinch hitter Aaron Williams, who was thrown out at third, trying to stretch it into a triple. And... That was in the seventh inning. Here is Zane Fowl. Fowl heading 349. The pitch squaring to bunt, and he pops it foul to the screen. No balls and one strike, so head coach Kevin Fergus is still looking for the right combination because the B-Diggers against some solid pitching have struggled, as we saw in the 3-1 loss to Jacob Thiessen of Sterling, one nothing yesterday to Brayden Pife of University. Looking to get on track here against Zach Barker of Platte Valley. No balls and one strike. The B-Diggers with seven right-handed hitters and two for the left side. And Walter and Simmons, three-step lead. Throw back to first back and diving as first felled. Awaiting the no ball and one strike pitch. Is Zane Fow again. Hirsch fell with about a two to three-step advantage. Now stretches it out. The offering. Swung on and popped up in the infield. The second baseman curves to his right, makes the catch on the edge of the grass, and there's one down. Yeah, it looked like Fowl was out in front of that pitch. Here is Petey, Alec Peterson, leading the team and hitting at 455. He's had a monster season. And really, his streak began with that game against Yuma on a Saturday a few weeks ago, just clubbing the ball all over the place as he's kept it up. 
He did homer against Resurrection Christian in a 4 to nothing victory a week ago Monday, stepping off as Barker. Get the most comprehensive news, sports, and opinion from the South Platte Sentinel. Visit their website at southplatsentinel.com. Petey with an open stance. And the offering and the breaking ball. Grazed Peterson as Hirschfeld was taking off. So on the hit by pitch, Petey to second. And that will bring up Kyle Rosenbrock. Yeah, looking to get out of a slump. Kyle Got all state stuff hitting only 290. We'll see if going to those, uh, they almost look like black football high tops is going to help them here. Rosenbrock, a four year starter and the 2A state player of the year in football. Another right handed hitter for the B Diggers. Barker looks in. The stretch, the runners take their leads. And the offering upstairs took something off at one ball and no strikes. Brush yesterday had threats in the third and seventh innings. Had the bases loaded in the third with one down, and Zane Fowl hit into a 5-3 double play. And then the Aaron Williams base hit that I mentioned. Throw back to first, and Petey is back in standing. Now we do have a challenge out here as well that we've only had one umpire working the game. So hopefully no close calls because you're going to have to make them from about anywhere from 90 to 100 feet away in some cases, the stretch. And the 1-0 swung on. That's popped up extremely high to right center field. Ryan Wade coming in, still coming. Here comes the right fielder, and the ball is caught by Clay Smith as he cut off that gap. And Rosenbrock is out. There's two down. And Kyle getting underneath that baseball. And that will send a baby Maltos Garcia. Maltos hitting 286 on the year. Yeah, Brush looking to get over the hump. And the one thing with the B-Diggers, they have not had two consecutive inept offensive games. Once they have slumped in one game, they've come back in the next. Hirschfeld off of second. Peterson off of first. Two down at the top of the first inning. And Kersey, the offering. And that's a strike. Knee high on the outer half. It's 0-1. And, and again, Barker coming with some all-speed stuff. The B-Diggers have been out in front on a couple of occasions with those pop-ups. No balls and one strike. And the offering. Swing and a miss through the fastball right by him at the knees. It's 0-2. Here to Arnoldo Matos Garcia, who will be the starting pitcher for the B-Diggers, incidentally, in this game. Hirschfeld with a huge lead at second. Peterson behind him at first. And a step-off by Barker. Keep in mind, we'll have the Rockies and Padres opening pitch at 640. We'll have Rockies on deck at 605 right after this Brush Platte Valley game in Kersey. The stretch in the 0-2 upstairs. Wasted that fastball. One ball and two strikes. After today, the B-Diggers have six games remaining. And four of those are league games. Five of those the pitch. And it's inside number four of those, actually. they got Platte Valley on Thursday, University tomorrow, then two next week against Eaton, the number one team undefeated this year. And then they'll close out the season in May with games against Faith Christian and Liberty Common. The offering, swing, and a miss and a ball above the letters, and Matos Garcia strikes out. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left to the bottom of the first we go. The B-Diggers do not score, and Platte Valley is coming to bat. This is 10-10 KSIR. And KSLYR.com. The B Diggers did not score in the top of the first inning. Here is the lineup that Arnoldo Matos Garcia will face. Batting first is the shortstop Tanner Getman. The pitcher is Zach Barker at second. Isaiah Smith, the catcher, at third. Christian Clare, the uh, first baseman, is the cleanup hitter. Batting fifth is the right fielder, Clay Smith. Easton Franick, the left fielder, bat sixth. Second baseman, Colton Curbs, is the seventh hitter. Batting eighth, the DH, Reno Chaparro. And Ryan Wake, the center fielder, bats ninth. The B-Diggers defensively at B.J. Hirschfeld at first. Mikey Gutierrez at second. Rene Cardenas is at third. The shortstop is Kyle Rosenbrock around the outfield. In left is Grayson Simmons. Nico Guzman in center. Zane Fowl in right. Behind the plate is Alec Peterson. 
And Arnoldo Matos Garcia, who is very good in relief against Resurrection Christian, that one solid inning with a couple of strikeouts in the 4 to nothing victory, will be on the hill, making a critical start for Brush. You'd imagine that with Guzman pitching yesterday extremely well, and Matos Garcia going today, that Rosenbrock would go tomorrow against University, and then Thursday, more than likely, go with Zane Foul. That's what I'm guessing at this point. Because this is rare. You've got four games in four days. But because of the rainouts that we had on Thursday and Saturday, both against University, the bead diggers are essentially in this situation where they're playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Here's the right-handed hitting shortstop, Tanner Getman. As he will bat here against Matos Garcia at the B-Diggers. Outside of that victory against Valley, it pitched very well on the road. And I did say victory when they allowed 10 runs, but won by 12. Hitting with a close stance. Wind and pitch. And that fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. To Tanner Getman. Getman, Barker, and Smith here in the first inning for Platte Valley. And the offering way outside. That left shoulder flew open. It was nowhere close. 2-0. And if Baby can just establish control, he's a good pitcher, but it's got to be the control. And that fastball is a strike on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike. Mechanics are nice and tight, but it's just about location at this point. As is the case with most pitchers, 400 straight away here in Kersey. Swung on and popped foul and out of play off to the right. And the count moves to 2-2. Two and two. Tomorrow also Fort Morgan Mustang Baseball at B106 and B106.com at home against Elizabeth. Getman back of the box. Two balls and two strikes. The opening hitter here in the bottom of the first inning. Peterson lays down the sign. And the pitch swung on and popped up on the right side. The first baseman, Hirschfeld, has a play on it in fair territory. Makes the two-handed grab just inside the line, and there's one down. Here's the opposing pitcher, another right-handed hitter in Zach Barker. Novus Auto Glass Repair and Replacement. Novus gets you back on the road, and AC Ice proudly supports local high school sports throughout northeast Colorado at any local grocery or convenience store near you, AC Ice. And the ball bounces in to Peterson. One ball and no strikes. 320 down the left field line, 330 down the right field line, 342 in the left field alley, left center field alley, and 355 in the right center field gap. And the pitch, again, bounced it into Peterson with a fastball, two balls and no strikes. Second consecutive hitter that Maltos Garcia has fallen behind, 2-0. and And like Getman, Barker hitting with that close stance with that front foot closer to the plate than the back foot, the 2-0 way outside. Moves the count to 3-0. and The B-Diggers threatened the first inning, but stranded two. Three balls and no strikes. And the pitch. Oh, he's short on that completely. Walked him. Three fastballs bounced in. That'll bring up Isaiah Smith. Yeah, no doubt that uh, Matos Garcia... He's going to have to just rear back. That's his thing, rear back. The short arming doesn't work for any pitcher, and particularly Baby. So here is Smith. Stretch and pitch runner going, and he bunts at first base side. Fielded by Matos Garcia, drops it, picks it up, throws to first in time. Runner goes to third, the throw, and it gets all the way through. Goddamn us, off the side of the fence. And scoring on the play is Barker. That'll be an error on the third baseman. Got in us. That was a good throw. And it's one to nothing. Platte Valley on the air by the third baseman. Got in us. He tried to tag and never had the ball. Yeah, I don't know why he tried to apply a tag with a ball that was never in his glove. And here's Christian Clear. Hitting from the left side. 
Yeah, just a sloppy play defensively. The pitch swung on, driven in the air to the center field. Nico Guzman to his right has a beat on it, and he makes the catch, and the inning is over. No runs, no hits, no errors. But check that. Two down. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I'm ahead of myself after the air. I was thinking the other one's two down here. I don't remember the last time I made that mistake. Two down, and Clay Smith will now hit. Yeah, that that is three outs. Yeah, Isaiah, that is three outs. It's, now I'm thinking what's happening there when the I think the umpire signaled two down. I had three outs here. Okay, I wasn't that crazy. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. Okay, now we head to the second inning. It's Platte Valley 1, brush nothing on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bay Diggers trail the Platte Valley Broncos 1 to nothing as we head to the second inning. In Kersey. Nico Guzman hitting 452. We'll step in for brush against the right hander, Zach Barker. The pitch. And the off speed pitch is in there for a strike at the knees. No balls in one strike. And the offering, breaking balls in the dirt and way outside. That levels accounted one and one. Guzman, Walter, and Gutierrez. The offering, swing and a miss out in front of the changeup. One ball and two strikes. And the B-Diggers really struggle with that all-speed stuff against Pipe yesterday, generating only two hits. The pitch in the dirt. Again, took something off the count as a two and two. Ply Valley scored their run and a B-Digger error in the bottom of the first inning. Wine and offering. Swing and a miss and a slow curve, and Guzman strikes out. And that's strikeout number two, and there's one down. There's Brandon Walter hitting 379. He's driven in 12, but no RBI opportunity here. And again, the Bee Diggers going with those stirrups. That used to be a thing of the 70s and 80s and even the 90s. Here's the wine and pitch, and that's in a dirt. One ball and no strikes. Brush did get a base hit in the opening inning from B.J. Hirschfeld. And this is certainly no time to get into a hitting slum when you've got four games in as many days. And he 1-0. Swing and a miss. He pulled that right hip. And it's one ball and one strike. Smith lays down the sign, setting up at the outside corner. Swung on and lifted down the left side, and it's foul. It is one and two to Brandon Walter. Home of the 895 dinner menu during the week and the best prime rib on Friday and Saturdays at Satwood Steakhouse and your one stop center for home improvement projects is Ackley Building Center, 1402 Mill Street and Brush for flooring, paint tools, appliances, and more. It's Ackley Building Center. And the offering inside. Two balls and two strikes to Brandon Walter. One down to the bases empty in the second inning. Plot Valley leads Brush one to nothing. And the pitch. A little bit high. Three and two. Barker again trying to let off speed stuff and get the bead diggers off balance. He's been successful so far. And the 3 2 pitch swung on and fouled back up in the zone. Walter stays alive. After Thursday, the bead diggers will get some time off. They'll play the following Tuesday against Eaton. And the breaking ball's up and away. And it's the first walk issued by Barker to go along with a hit batsman. There's Mikey Gutierrez. Hitting just over 400, but having issues with the off-speed pitches. And he's been dropped in the lineup, but I tell you, when he makes contact, he hits it a long way. A very good gap hitter for Brush. One step lead for Walter. Pitch. And that is a strike on the inside corner. Walter with a delay steals in there at second sliding. So the Bee Diggers with a runner in scoring position, and Brandon Walter with one down in the top of the second inning, trailing by a run in Kersey. The stretch by the right-hander, Zach Barker, the pitch, swung on and lifted foul and out of play off to the right. 
Moves the count to 0-2 with a G-man, Grayson Simmons, who's tied with Gutierrez. Can you imagine your eight and nine hitters both have 18 RBIs? Tied for the team lead. And the offering. And that is a ball. Boy, I don't know where that missed. Gutierrez, I think, was starting to walk towards the dugout. One ball and two strikes. Must have been a little bit low on the all-speed pitch. And the offering, and that's upstairs. Uh, definitely missed. Two and two. Walter takes the lead. Smith lays down the sign. And now Mikey calls time. Gutierrez back of the box. The stretch. And the offering. Swung on and grounded left side deep in the hole at short. A long throw for Getman to first, and that's going to be late. And Gutierrez with a speed beats it out. Second hit by the B-Diggers, and first and third now for Grayson Simmons, who can take the team lead on his own in RBIs, maybe just with a simple grounder. The B-Diggers are looking for the equalizer and perhaps more. Simmons got off to a hot start this year. He had 10 RBIs, I believe, in the first, what, three or four games, if even that. Gutierrez might be taking off from first with Barker throwing the off-speed stuff, and he does not, and the changeup is down and in. One ball and no strikes. We're past the top of the hour. This is 10-10 KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, Greeley, and KSIR.com. The 1-0 pitch. Swag and a miss out in front of the changeup. And the count is leveled at 1-1 one and one to Grayson Simmons. Walter at third, Gutierrez at first. Righty against lefty. And the pitch. And that is inside. And Barker thought he had the corner. 2-1. and one. Yeah, he's missing a couple of close pitches. I thought he had Gutierrez rung up. but Mikey stayed alive and got the base hit. Nice job by the senior second baseman. The offering. Inside as it backed Simmons off the plate. Three balls and one strike. And the dangerous B.J. Hirschfeld is on deck. The G-man awaits the 3-1. And he takes it upstairs. Second walk of the inning issued by Zach Barker. will have a visit to the hill. And B.J. Hirschfeld will come to the plate with the bases loaded. And only one out here in the top of the second inning. Platte Valley does hold a one nothing lead on a beat digger error in the bottom of the first inning as the entire infield will convene. Better quality, better service, better results. It's Better Electric, the home of Sterling Trailers, your big tech's headquarters. That's Better Electric. And you need your vehicle and farm equipment to be in top shape, so make sure you take care of them by purchasing the best quality parts at great prices at your local Napa store, Central Auto Parts. In Fort Morgan. Here's Hirschfeld. Walter at third. Gutierrez at second. Simmons at first. Barker out of the windup. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled straight back. No balls in one strike. Barker's not going to blow you away, but he struck out two already. His out pitch appears to be the changeup. And the offering. Way outside. Looked like he tried to unleash a curveball. And the count is even at 1-1 one one to B.J. Hirschfeld. Ryan Waite playing extremely shallow in center. The pitch way outside. Hirschfeld's got some decent power. 2-1. and one. Again from the windup. And the pitch. And that's a beautiful changeup right there for a strike at the knees. Two balls and two strikes. Smith lays down the sign. And the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and grounded sharply to short. Getman has it go right underneath his glove into left center field. Scoring is Brandon Walter. And now here comes... Mikey Gutierrez, he will score. The ball gets away. Grayson Simmons racing for the plate. He slides, and he's going to be out at the plate. Well, that'll be an error on Getman unless, well, 
I don't think he, I don't know how well he saw the ball. It's still an RBI. And the third is B.J. Hertzfeld. And the game is tied at one. And here comes Zane Fowl. And the pitch is a ball. One ball and no strikes. Wind and pitch upstairs. So the B-Diggers do lead 2-1. to one. Out of the windup is Barker. And the offering. And the curveball is outside. And he's already walked two in the inning. He's behind 3-0. and oh. And on deck is Alec Peterson. And that one is away in a third walk in the inning. And that'll bring up Peterson. And again, Petey has just been, seems he's on base virtually every time now. Not the most conventional way the first time up. He was hit by a pitch. But was stranded. The stretch by Barker with runners at the corners. Runner goes. Swung on, driven deep to left field towards the track. And that ball is way out of here. It is a three-run homer for Alec Peterson. Petey with a bomb, and there was no doubt about that one. And the Bee Diggers now lead 5-1. to one. Easton Frantic gave it a look, took a couple of steps, and then just watched it sail over the fence. And here comes Kyle Rosenbrock, Petey. With a second-round tripper in as many weeks. And he just waited on that pitch and deposited over the left field fence. Rosenbrock popped out his first time up. Here's the wine and pitch, and that one is down and away. One ball and no strikes. Barker delivers in the dirt. 2 and 0. Oh. Now Rosenbrock in a hitter's count. And Petey didn't waste any time. He went after the very first pitch. And the 2-0. And the breaking ball is inside. Man, that's the unfortunate thing. There's just no defense for a walk. Three balls and no strikes. and We'll have a visit to the hill for the umpire. I wonder if he's questioning Barker's reaction to certain pitches. I mean, I'll say this. It looked like a couple of pitches there should have been called strikes that he didn't get the call on. Because I don't see Barker do anything illegal out there. So three balls and no strikes. And again, he's the lone umpire out there, which you rarely see. So either somebody got sick or just missed an assignment. And the 3-0. And that's a strike. Took something off it. Bell tie, it's 3-1. and one. To Kyle Rosenbrock, we're in the top of the second inning. The B-Diggers have put up a five spot. Wind and pitch. Swung on and driven in the air into left center field and diving right and making the catch is Ryan Waite. Robbing Rosenbrock of a base hit. But the B-Diggers do score five runs in the inning. They do it on two hits, one air, and one of the two hits was a three-run homer from Alec Peterson. An inning and a half complete in Kersey. It's brush five, Platte Valley one on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Five to one, the B-Diggers lead the Platte Valley Broncos as we head to the bottom of the second inning in a game that was delayed by weather for about 12 minutes. Alec Peterson is stroking a three-run homer. In the top of the second inning, off of the right-hander, Zach Barker, who really labored in that inning with three walks. It'll be the five, six, and seven hitters. 
As Clay Smith will lead off. Another left-handed hitter against the right-hitter, Baby Matos Garcia. And again, this is a week you got to run the table now if the b are to contend for that second spot. After losing yesterday, the University won none. Peterson lays down the sign, and the opening pitch of the bottom of the second inning is taken for a strike. Took something off on the outside corner at the knees. It's 0-1 to the left-handed hitting Smith. B. Digger outfield playing pretty shallow. The offering. Swag! And it misses the ball above belt level. No balls and two strikes. Maybe putting some steam behind that one. Now you got to throw a good waste pitch. 0-2. Inside with a fastball. Didn't miss by much. Ball one, strike two to Smith. Now Peterson setting up at the outside corner of the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him on that corner. Looked like Matos Garcia took something off of that one. There's one down. There's Easton Frannick. a right-handed hitter for Platte Valley. Wine and offering. And that is over but low. One ball and no strikes with the bases empty and one down in the bottom of the second inning. It's brush five, Platte Valley one. And the pitch. Bounced it in there. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, I'm not sure how the pitching will set up for the remainder of the year if Baby will get another start. He won't start against Eaton. We know that. And the pitch. Bounced that one in. That's one of the reasons. Got good stuff, but on occasion will just all of a sudden miss the strike zone. 3-0 to Frannick. And the offering. Bounced that one in. Four consecutive pitches thrown out of the strike zone. And here is Colton Curbs, another hitter for Platt Valley. Baby thus far, so 19 pitches, but only eight strikes. It's illustrative of the inconsistency that he goes through at times. Of course, he doesn't get a ton of time on the mound, so you've got to you got to give him that as well. Experience is something that there's no substitute for. And he bounces that one in, and Peterson can't find it. It gets behind him. Five consecutive balls, and on the wild pitch to second is Frannick. And Platte Valley now threatening in the bottom of the second inning, trailing by four. One ball and no strikes. Matos Garcia delivers. Man, not even close, and that one gets away, but Peterson's able to flag it down. And somebody's got to go out there, and Peterson does. He's got to talk to his pitcher. Two balls and no strikes. Now it's 13 balls and eight strikes thrown by Matos Garcia. And we'll have a visit to the Hill as well. That's his brother, the pitching coach, Arduro Matos Garcia. Sometimes that's... Not a good thing if he's intimidated at all, but uh, he's talking to him about his release point. Because that's, that's one thing that Baby is struggling with right now after looking very good against the first hitter, Smith, and striking him out, and all of a sudden he lost his release point. So two balls and no strikes. With one down and one on at the bottom of the second inning. And the B-Diggers leading the game over Platte Valley 5-1. to one. Colton Curb settles back in. The stretch by Baby. And the 2-0. A strike with a fastball just above the knees. It's 2-1. and one. Rino Chaparro is on deck. Two balls, one strike. And the pitch to Curbs. Swing and a miss just above belt level. It's 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, just a little break in, in that rhythm, or lack thereof. 
with a visit to the hill can help out a pitcher. Now let's see a baby can retire curves. 2-2 pitch. Fastball is up and in. Ball three, strike two. Yesterday's game lasted just over an hour and a half. We might go four or five innings in an hour and a half in this one. And the three ball, two strike pitch. Swing and a miss on ball four. That was high and away, but Kerb swung at it. And there's two down. Now he gave Baby the strike out there. That was nowhere near. And Reno Chaparro hitting from the right side, the eighth place hitter. Strikeout number two in the inning for Matos Garcia. The stretch by the right hander. Pitch to Chaparro. Swag and a miss and a ball up and in. No balls and one strike. Baby looks in. And the 0 1. Swung on and foul back. No balls and two strikes. One more strike, and he is able to strike out the side here in the bottom of the second inning. Just one pitch away. Here to Chaparro. Bank your financial needs with the Logan County Home Dome Bank since 1917. First National Bank in Fleming, member FDIC. Baby steps off the back of the rubber. No balls and two strikes. Two down and a man at second. And Easton Frannick. That's a huge lead in the pitch. Up and in with a fastball. And the count moves to one and two. And now the weather's turned into virtue of the same as about 20 minutes before game time. Peterson lays down the sign. And the 2-2. Swing and a miss and a ball above the letters. And Matos Garcia strikes out the side in the second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. Two complete. It's brush five. Platte Valley one on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Diggers with a 5-1 to one lead over Platte Valley and Kersey as we head to the third inning. It'll be Baby, Matos Garcia, Nico Guzman, and Brandon Walter. Matos Garcia was one of two strikeout victims earlier in this game from the right-hander, Zach Barker. And one thing that could save brush pitching is if they keep the offense going and reduce this to a five- or six-inning game. As they're up by four right now. Wind and pitch. Swung on and foul back. On a ball tailing away, it's 0-1. Now Barker's been pretty decent when he's been able to locate, but he threw one really bad pitch to Peterson. And he hit it for a three-run homer. Swung on and popped up on the curveball. Right side, first baseman clear, is running out of room, and it's out of play. No balls and two strikes to Arnoldo Matos Garcia. Attempted to help out his own cause here in the top of the third inning. CHS Grainland, farmer owned with Global Connections. Find them online. Online, that is a grainland.coop. 0-2. Curveball is lifted into the left center field gap. A long run, and that ball is going to drop in between the left and center field of Matos Garcia to second. And he's in there with a leadoff double. Nice long run there by Frannick. Almost got to the baseball. But the bead diggers have the leadoff man on to begin the third. And that was just hitting the right spot. Nico Guzman struck out swinging in his first at bat. And he will now hit for the bead diggers. The stretch. And the offering. Swing and a miss way out in front of that pitch. Platte Valley still looking for their first hit. The Bee Diggers have four in the game. The lone run was scored on an error. And the 0-1 to Guzman. And the breaking ball is in the dirt blocked beautifully by Smith. Count levels at one ball and one strike. Matos got to see off of second. Nico with a slightly open stance and the pitch. Swing and a miss, man. He's pulling that left leg and 
opening up big time. And Barker's just going to keep throwing that same pitch until Nico waits on it a little bit more. One and two to Guzman, taking a huge swing as well. And the pitch. Swung on and grounded to third. And to his left is Perkins. Throws to first. And he's out. Rudder takes off for third. And the throw is wide. And that's headed all the way to the side of the fence. And scoring is Matos Garcia on the throwing air by clear. No RBI. The Beat Diggers now lead 6-1. to one. And that'll send up Brandon Walter. So that play has happened on each side, and they both resulted in errors. Walter walked, and then later scored in the five-run second. Line and pitch. Swung on and lined into the right center field gap for a base hit. And the Bee Diggers have their fifth hit already of this game after only two yesterday against Braden Fife. Or Pife, excuse me. Mikey Gutierrez had an infield singles first time up. And we're going to have a pitching change, and we'll take it with him. A two-minute break. Two minutes. Brush six, Platte Valley one in the top of the third inning on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Ryan Wade is the new pitcher, and he throws a ball. That one is lined into right center field with Brandon Walter running for a base hit. Walter around second. He's headed for third, and Mikey Gutierrez is two for two. And that'll bring up Grayson Simmons. An excellent hit and run on a shot hit by Mikey Gutierrez. The Bee Diggers have their sixth hit of the game. Clay Smith goes to center. Colton Curbs in right. And the pitcher, Zach Barker, now at second base. Simmons walked and then later scored. Or check that. He was thrown out at the plate. Trying to score on the ball hit by Ryan uh, B.J. Hirschfeld. Excuse me. Throw back to first, and that was pretty close. I tell you, Mikey nearly fell asleep over there. He went in standing, and he probably should have gone back in diving. With one out, runners at the corner, 6-1 to one brush. They've got one across here in the third. In Kersey over the Platte Valley Broncos. Throw back to first, and again back in standing. Now, there's no doubt that Mikey plans to take off and get in a scoring position for Simmons. Got a three-step lead. Now he's checking out Wait a little bit closer. The pitch upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Platte Valley's three league wins have come over Estes Park a couple of times, and they beat Strasburg 4-1. to one. Off of third is Walter. Gutierrez at first. Throw back to first. Back in diving, and the throw is wide of the target. Clear's got to chase it down. Walter will score. Gutierrez to second. It's a throwing error on Ryan Wait. And now Platte Valley has committed three errors in the game. And one ball and no strikes. On Simmons. The stretch and the pitch high and away. Count moves to 2-0. and oh. And again, this is one of the goals of the B-Diggers, not only to win, but try to shorten up this game. 2-0 pitch upstairs on the off-speed. Walks were an issue with Barker. He also hit a batter. And now it's 3-0 and oh on Grayson Simmons with Hirschfeld waiting to hit next. And that pitch is a strike as he grooved it in over the plate. 3-1. and one. Close the book here on the starting pitcher. Swing and a foul to the screen. That's three balls and two strikes to Grayson Simmons. Two in. One down and one on. Here in the top half of the third inning, the Bee Diggers are in the lead 7-1, to and time is called. Barker goes two in a third inning, throws 60 pitches, strikes out two, walks three, allows five hits, and only two earned runs of the seven. Swung on and lifted foul and out of play. Count remains at three and two. To Grayson Simmons. The stretch by Waite. 
Gutierrez with a humongous lead at second. And the pitch. Swing and foul to the screen. Just barely got a piece of the baseball. When it comes to livestock feed, you can rely on Colorado Soy to help deal with the nutritional needs of your livestock. Visit coloradosoy.com. Another 3-2 pitch coming to the beat digger left fielder. Throw back to second and Barker over there to cover, but Gutierrez back in time. We're in the top half of the third inning, and the beat diggers lead by half a dozen. Stretch by weight. And a step off. No throw, nobody covering. The Bay Diggers tallied five in the second. We've got two so far here in the third. And we'll have another 3-2 pitch coming up to Grayson Simmons. And here it is. Swung on and popped up extremely high in the shallow right center field. Barker, the second baseman, goes back, still going, still moving. And the ball is dropped out there. And remaining at second is Gutierrez. And the Bay Diggers have first and second with one down, and that'll be the fourth error of the game by Platte Valley. And you wonder if that ball shouldn't have been called off by the center fielder Smith. And another visit to the hill. That certainly was not the pitcher Waite's fault. That's a routine fly ball, but somebody's got to call and make the play as B.J. Hirschfeld will hit momentarily for the Bay Diggers. So Brush is getting some help here offensively. One of the reasons for their success in this game, besides the fact they're just swinging it pretty good so far, the big hit was a three-run homer by Alec Peterson. So Gutierrez at second, Simmons at first. Here's Herfeld with one down and a methodical moving third inning. B-Diggers still have two more times at the plate at the very least. And the pitch. Changeup is low. One ball and no strikes. B.J. Hirschfeld, the stretch. And the offering. Swung on, hit off the end of the bat on the ground to wait. He picks it up, drops it, throws to first in time. The other runners advance to second and third. And there's two down. Fow has popped out and walked. And with a big chance to extend the six-run lead here in the third. The pitch inside. One ball and no strikes. Two foul. Gutierrez at third, Simmons at second. And the 1-0. Low and away, two balls and no strikes. Didn't miss by much. Just trying to locate the corner there. And Petey's on deck. Foul awaits the 2-0. And the breaking ball is a strike right down the middle. It's 2-1. and one. Wait is out of the windup with two runners in scoring position. The offering. Swung on and grounded up the middle. The shortstop, Getman, has it. Fields throws to first, and that's it. The B-Diggers are retired in this third inning. However, Brush takes advantage of some miscues by Platte Valley. Two runs on three hits, three errors, and two men left. To the bottom of the third we go in one minute. It's Brush 7, Platte Valley 1 on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Matos Garcia begins the bottom of the third for Brush. Facing the nine, one, and two hitters, Ryan Wade, Tanner Getman, and Zach Barker. The B Diggers lead seven to one, scoring five of their seven runs in the second inning. And Baby got on rhythm after throwing six consecutive balls and nearly got hit by a ball there from Peterson. Didn't see the throw coming back. Oh, it has turned into a gorgeous sunny afternoon in Kersey. And we'll be in brush each of the next two days. 
tomorrow against University at 4 o'clock on 1010 and KSIR.com Thursday against Platte Valley. So far, Baby has struck out three and walked a couple. Here's Ryan Waite with an open stand from the right side. Wine and pitch. The fastball is upstairs. Still, Matos Garcia has thrown 16 balls and only 14 strikes. So he has battled here through two innings. The pitch upstairs, 2-0. and Just trying to take something off it to locate. Two balls and no strikes as Waite steps out. Peterson lays down the sign and the 2-0 pitch. Down and away. 3-0. and And these are when the games move very slow. We've had walks on both sides. The pitch right there for a strike. And with a fastball, it is 3-1 and on the ninth place hitter weight. The stretch and the pitch. And he walked him outside. That is the sixth walk issued in the game. Three by each side. Tanner Getman popped the first in the first. And Platte Valley's got the leadoff man on in the bottom of the third inning. About a three-step advantage over there for Wade at first. Matos Garcia comes home, runner goes, swung on and popped up. That is playable in the infield. Who's going to call for it? Matos Garcia is giving way to Peterson, who makes the catch. That was right in between the pitcher and the catcher up the third base side. And Peterson was able to make the play, and there's one down. Well, that's too bad for Platte Valley because Wade's got a huge jump. I don't think Petey would have been able to throw him out. There's Zach Barker who walked and scored Platte Valley's only run. Let's see if Wade takes off. Step off there by Matos Garcia. If you step off the back, you're good. If you step off the front and don't throw, it's a balk. Baby stretches and delivers up and in. One ball and no strikes. The B-Diggers defensively are double play depth. With Gutierrez at second and Rosenbrock at third. Check that, it's short. Long pause, runner goes. Taken for a strike, throw to second up the second base side, and Gutierrez has it go right underneath his glove. And to third on the air. We're going to call that air really on Petey because he made a terrible throw. Even though it probably should have been caught there. The B-Diggers commit their second air. One ball and one strike. So Barker looking to driving a run for Platte Valley to get him closer. And the pitch. Fastball in the outside corner. One and two. Baby did strike out the side. And he struck out the side in the second. One and two to Barker. And the offering. In the dirt on the breaking ball, blocked by Peterson. Count moves to two and two. That's 21 balls and 17 strikes thrown by Matos Garcia. He's just battling out there, but he's getting the job done. With the B-Diggers up by six runs in the bottom of the third inning. 2-2. Swung on and grounded a second. This will score a run. Gutierrez throws to first. His crossing home plate is weight. And retired as Barker, but he gets the RBI. And the Platte Valley deficit is down to five. It's brushed seven. Platte Valley two. There's Isaiah Smith. Who was thrown out. Attempting to bunt. And the pitch. Swag. And a messing up ball above the letters. No balls in one strike. Baby ready. Gets the sign from Peterson. And the offering. And the breaking ball is up and in. Looking for at least a breaking ball action to it. Didn't get anything. 
One ball and one strike. The pitch. Right over the plate for a strike. Took something off it. It is one and two. With a base is empty and two down at the bottom of the third inning. The stretch by Matos Garcia. And the pitch. Breaking ball is outside. And the count levels at two and two. Again the stretch with the bases empty. Swing and a miss. And Isaiah Smith strikes out. Platte Valley does score a run in the bottom of the third inning. No hits and air and nobody left. Platte Valley is still looking for their first hit of the game, but they've got a couple of runs on the board. It is brush seven, Platte Valley two on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. It's a 7 2 lead for Brush. Let's head to the fourth inning in Kersey. And Alec Peterson, who delivered a three run homer in the five run second, will bat for the B Diggers. His first plate appearance, he was hit by a pitch. This will be the first full inning of work from Ryan Waite, down and away, scooped up by Smith. One ball and no strikes. The stretch with the base is empty, and that ball is down and in. 2-0. And, oh. and the offering, and that's in the dirt. 3-0 and oh to Petey to begin the fourth. The stretch by weight. The pitch low on the off-speed. Peterson walks. The fourth walk issued by Platte Valley Pitching. Let the State Farm Insurance Office of Greg Mon and Brush help you find the best policy to fit your life, home, auto, life, and health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mon a call, 842-4555. Rosenbrock has popped out in line to left center. Runner going, swung on, grounded a short. Getman will have a play at first, and the throw is going to be in time. Rosenbrock is retired. Peterson to second. As he was taking off on the pitch. Here is Arnoldo Matos Garcia. Maybe struck out swinging and then doubled. And the struggles continue offensively for Rosenbrock, who's been such a great player. Only hitting 290 coming into this game and is now 0 for 3. And the runner goes to third, and that's up and in. The throw is going to be into left field. Peterson will score easily. There was really no need for a throw because he had an easy stolen base. It'll be the fifth Platte Valley error. And the B-Diggers now lead 8-2. to two. And that error on the catcher, Smith. And it's 1-0 and oh on Matos Garcia swinging a foul back. Well, it seems to struggle a little bit. That's usually one of these so-called bugaboos or the miscues. Swing and a foul on the next pitch. One ball and two strikes. So the B-Diggers have scored at least one run in each of the last three innings. Time is called. One ball and two strikes to... Arnoldo Matos Garcia. And the pitch. Swung on and lifted into shallow right field. Coming on as Colton Curbs. He'll make the catch. And there's two down. And here is Nico Guzman. Who has struck out and grounded out to the third baseman Perkins. He is 0 for 2. The B-Diggers are out hitting Platte Valley. 6 to nothing. Swung on and fouled off to the right. Been a very sloppy game. Seven errors combined. Two by the B-Diggers, five by the Broncos. Anytime you have more errors and hits, that's not good baseball. And you got more walks as well with six or as many walks as you do have hits in the game. No balls in one strike. Two down top of the fourth inning. Rush in the lead of Platte Valley, 8-2. to two. Guzman settles back into the box. Wind by weight to pitch, and the fastball is up. 
Levels that counted one and one. And the offering. Swung on in line towards center field. Smith is coming on, and he's going to play it on a hop. He didn't get a good read on the ball. Was able to trap it. And the B-Diggers have their seventh hit of the game, and Guzman is one for three. Had he kept coming, I think he would have made the play. But he wasn't sure. And Brandon Walter has walked and singled. Is now inside the batter's box for the B-Diggers. Short lead for Guzman. Now stretches it out to two and a half steps. Let's see if he goes. He looks like he's going to take off. And he takes off. And that pitch is down and in. The throw to second is high. And sliding in safely is Guzman with a stolen base. And it's one ball and no strikes on Brandon Walter, who's driven in 12 on the season. And the pitch. Change up as a strike on the outer half. One and one. Walter, the DH in this game, the pitch. Swung on, tap foul up the first base side. Again, going with the off speed. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, even Waite has been all over the place with 17 strikes and 14 balls, but he's kept the B-Diggers at bay offensively since he came into the game in the third inning for Zach Barker. And the pitch. And the breaking ball is outside. Rolling her jewelry and gifts is the leader in Northeast Colorado for diamonds, jewelry, watches, and expert in-store jewelry repairs for service, quality, and value. Shop Rowingers in downtown Sterling. Swung on, grounded towards right field. It's a base hit beyond the diving Zach Barker. Rounding third is Guzman. He's going to score. The throw is cut off. And Brosh now lead 9-2 to two on the RBI single from Brandon Walter, his 13th ribby of the season. Mikey Gutierrez is two for two. And he will now bat for brush. Reed Diggers have two across in his frame. The pitch up and in. One ball and no strikes. To the senior second baseman for the Bead Diggers, Gutierrez. And the offering. Down and away. It skips all the way to the screen. Smith has to chase it down. And on the wild pitch... Walters into second. Now Mikey looking for a three-hit game with a base hit right here. 2-0 in the dirt. Three balls and no strikes. And on deck is Grayson Simmons. Let's see if Mikey's taking all the way on the 3-0. And he will, and it's a strike. Spotted that fastball in the outside corner. Three and one with two down, two in, and a man at second at the top of the fourth inning. And the offering swung on and fouled off the end of the bat up the first base side. And again, with that all-speed stuff, we got to wait on it, and Mikey was a little bit early. But it certainly made an adjustment in this game. Three and two to Mikey Gutierrez. Walter off of second. The stretch by the right-hander, Wait, And Gutierrez calls time. The B-Diggers with another base hit would match their run total. They've got nine runs on eight hits. But then Walter would score, so they'd have ten runs on nine hits. The pitch swung on and grounded a third, and Perkins has it go off his, I think his foot or something, and it, Ricochets to the shortstop, Getman, and the inning continues, and that's air number six for Platte Valley. That'll bring up Grayson Simmons, who's walked and reached on an air. Hard hit ball by Mikey G, but it was a play that should have been made over third. And now Gutierrez more than likely will take off from first. Got a two-step lead. Wait with a long pause. Wait comes home. Upstairs is Gutierrez held up at first. One ball and no strikes. And we'll have Rockies on deck at 6.05. 
Rockies and Padres at 640. First pitch from Coors. Long pause again. 1-0. Swung on and grounded. Foul down the first base side. Count levels at one ball and one strike. Can follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports or Facebook page at 1010KSIR Sports or KSIRSports.com for a pitch by pitch account of this game. Wait with a long pause again. 1 1 pitch. Down and in. Two balls and one strike. The Bay Diggers have a seven-run lead here in the top of the fourth inning. And the offering runner going is upstairs. Throw will not be made to second. Now back to third. Walter had the ball go off his body. And it lands right in front of Walter. So it is three and one. And Simmons there in a hitter's count. If he can get it into the outfield, he would have 20 RBIs in a year. But he's got to get a strike here ahead in the count. At ball three, strike one. Waits out of the windup with two down in the fourth. The pitch swung on and lifted extremely high into right field. Colton curbs along the line into foul territory. Cannot make the catch. It just remains foul. As he backed up, he got a slight beat on the ball but never got clearly under it. So it remains at three and two to Grayson Simmons. They got a break there. That was certainly playable, but... No error scored on this end. The guy just went beyond his reach. And the 3-2 pitch is down and away, and it's a walk to Grayson Simmons, and the bases are loaded for B.J. Hirschfeld, who has singled, reached on an air, driving in a run, by the way. And he grounded out. A long inning here, but two runs have been scored by Brush. And somehow Wake can get out of it with minimal damage. Wine and pitch. Swung on and grounded right off the pitcher's glove to the second baseman, Barker. He charges. He'll have no play. It'll be a base hit for Hirschfeld. Scoring is Brandon Walter, and the Bee Diggers now lead 10-2. to two. And they have scored three runs in the inning. Hirschfeld with a second hit. This will be the ninth hitter of the inning. Foul takes it inside. Foul is 0 for 2. He's popped out, walked, and grounded a short. Hirschfeld now with a couple of RBIs in the game. The pitch up and in. And nowhere to put him. Two balls and no strikes. Wine by weight, the offering. Up and in again. It is 3-0. And, oh. and the hottest hitter for Brush is waiting on deck, and Alec Peterson. Foul more than likely will be taking 3-0 pitch, and that's nowhere close up and in, and he walks. Here comes Gutierrez. We'll have a visit to the hill. The B-Diggers now lead in the fourth inning, 11-2. And we'll have a pitching change, a two-minute break. Brush leads by nine on 10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Reno Shaparo into pitch for Platte Valley, the third pitcher for the Broncos. The B-Diggers have scored four runs in this inning, and they lead Platte Valley 11-2. The Broncos still do not have a hit in the game against Matos Garcia, but we're only in the fourth inning. And again, the B-Diggers can make this a five-inning game if they can take a minimal Minimum of a 10-run lead. At third is Simmons. Hirsch fell at second and foul at first. And the base on balls in the airs have really destroyed Platte Valley's chances in this game. They have committed six errors in the game. And then pitching-wise, it's also been a battle. They've been giving away walks with six, and Peterson was hit by a pitch. So six walks, a hit batsman, and six errors. That's that's 13 freebies right there. 
The wind and the pitch. Swung on and grounded. Foul down the third base side. No balls and one strike. With two down in the top of the fourth inning. Now right now that ball to Peterson looks like a beach ball coming up there. He's been all over any pitch he sees recently. The offering swung on and lifted into shallow left center field. Coming on is Smith still coming. And he makes the catch to his right. And that will end the B-Digger threat here in the top of the fourth inning. Not before they score four runs on three hits, two errors, and three men left. The B-Diggers, despite a nine-run lead, have stranded seven. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's brush 11, Platte Valley 2. This is 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. We head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. The Bay Diggers lead the Platte Valley Broncos by a score of 11 to 2. And Arnoldo Matos Garcia will face Christian Clear, the left handed hitting first baseman. Followed by Clay Smith and Easton Frannick, the four, five, and six hitters. Two of these are lefties. And actually, against the lefties, Matos Garcia has thrown well. This will be pitch number 45 for the right-hander out of the stretch with the bases empty, the offering. He bounces it in. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, if you're all over the place, you can be tough to hit. But you will allow base runners. The stretch and the 1-0. Bounce that one in. Two balls and no strikes. Four strikeouts and three walks. For the junior right-hander. It's going to be a critical piece to this team next year on the mound, you would think. 2-0. Swung on and tap foul up the first base side. Two balls and one strike, as will B.J. Hirschfeld, who's playing first this afternoon. Stop, shop, and save on all your grocery needs and snacks for game time enjoyment. The Brush Grocery Cart. 1302 West Edison Street in Brush. Brush Grocery Cart. The curveball is outside. Three balls and one strike. Brush trailed briefly, one to nothing, then broke it open with a five-run second. And the offering swung on tap foul again up the first base side towards the Platte Valley dugout. Three and two on the left-handed hitting first baseman, Christian Clear. Matos Garcia gets the sign from Peterson. And the offering, and that's in the dirt, and he walked him. And Baby has now walked four in the game. But he did strike out this hitter coming up, Clay Smith, in his first plate appearance. B-Diggers played a game yesterday that lasted just over an hour and a half. Now we're going to go closer to two hours today. We're in an hour and 21 in the bottom of the fourth inning. The stretch by Matos Garcia. Step off, no throw. We did start about 12 minutes late due to weather conditions. All of a sudden it got windy and a little bit rainy here. Perfect now. Another step off, now a throw. And back in diving is clear. Smith has yet to see a pitch in this sequence. Matos Garcia stretches. And the pitch. He bounced it in. Nice stop by Peterson. Throw back the first. Back at diving is clear. And again, Baby's losing the release point again. Might need another visit from either Peterson or the pitching coach at Duro Matos Garcia. One ball, no strikes. See if he can rebound on this particular pitch. The stretch. Three-step lead at first. Runner going. Bounces it in, and Peterson can't make a throw. It's a stolen base for clear. Two balls and no strikes. And on deck for Platte Valley's Easton Frannick. A stretch and the offering. In the dirt, bounces away, but not far enough. And now Baby 
really losing control 3 and 0 yeah it was in 2006 the most memorable game that i've done in since i started calling the games of the 99 season 98 99 school year 3 0 and that's low we're not going to get to this point but in 2006 we'll go through that game in just a second Here's Easton Fronick who walked. And in fact, it was in this inning that the B.A. Diggers got into trouble in that game. When Brush defeated Platte Valley here in 2006, the score was 29-23, and there were 13 walks issued in the bottom of the fourth inning. 538 pitches thrown in the game. The game took over three hours. And by the end of the game, I needed a shrink. And that is a ball. We're not getting to that point yet, but uh, we've seen lots of walks already. Baby has issued five. And Platte Valley's had their share of walks as well. They've had six walks, so 11 walks so far in the game. The 1-0 to Fronick, first to throw to second, and nothing doing there. Yeah, I... Still can't believe there was a baseball game of that type played at any level. That was more like T-ball. The stretch. And the one out of Fronick. And that is over but low. This could be Baby's last hitter. Because he's getting himself into trouble. Two balls and no strikes. Pied Valley's just standing up there. They don't have to do anything. They shouldn't. If the opposing pitcher can't throw a strike, no reason to swing it. Two balls and no strikes. Baby now has 10 more balls and strikes. 33 balls, 23 strikes. Clear and Smith take their leads. And the 2-0. That's right there, a fastball just above the knees. It's 2-1. and one. Yeah, this is the hitter for Matos Garcia. If he can't get him out, there is activity. As Ryan Fergus is warming up in the left field bullpen for Brush. The pitch. Swag. And I'm missing a ball tailing in the inside corner. Two and two. And I'm sure Baby's frustrated with himself. He's got the goods. When he throws it in the strike zone, that's why he's not allowed a hit yet. And he has struck out four. The stretch. And the two, two, two Fronick. And that ball went over his head. Looked like he tried to unleash a curveball, and there was no movement. Three balls and two strikes. The B-Diggers do lead in the bottom of the fourth inning, 11-2. to two. But Platte Valley threatening to make it closer, the pitch. And that is over, but low with a fastball. And baby Maltos Garcia has walked the bases loaded for Colton Curbs. Or check that. Yeah, Dylan King. Now the hitter. So King will now bat. In this spot that Colton Curbs previously occupied. And now here comes Arturo Matos Garcia. Let's see if he's going to make a move. Or he's just going to talk to Baby. With the bases loaded and nobody out of the bottom of the fourth inning. And the B-Diggers in the lead by nine. But that lead is in severe jeopardy. Not the lead, but the size of the lead is in jeopardy. And it looks like he'll stay out there. 60 pitches so far for Bantos Garcia, so he's not tired. I think they might try to buy some time to get Ryan Fergus into the game, but nothing doing. So this will be Matos Garcia's hitter, Dylan King, from the right side. And the activity has ceased in the bullpen. So Matos Garcia is going to be called on here to keep going. Okay, now Fergus is going to start warming up again. I don't know what's happening here. He was warming up, he stopped, now he's warming up again apparently. 
Clear at third. Smith at second. Fronick at first. And here comes Kevin Ferguson. Now, let's see. That's that's already another visit. That should be it. And, yeah, now he's taken out of the game. Let's take a 90-second break. That took forever. A brush 11, Platte Valley 2 in the bottom of the fourth inning on 10-10 KSIR and on the World Wide Web at KSIR.com. All right, Ryan Fergus is now the new pitcher for the B-Diggers. Bases loaded in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Platte Valley trails brush 11-2. to two. And it's just a straight-up change. As Fergus steps in, Matos Garcia just taking a, a rest in the dugout. He labored out there in this inning. Dylan King hits from the right side. His first plate appearance of the game for Platte Valley. Platte Valley just needs one big hit to try to get back into the game. The fastball's in the outer half for a strike just above the knees. It's 0-1. At third is clear. Clay Smith at second. Easton Fronick at first. 0-1 pitch. And the breaking ball is a beauty right down the middle. It's 0-2. And the sophomore Fergus is in command right there with the first two pitches. No balls and two strikes to King. Wine and pitch. Bounced it in. One ball and two strikes. And operating out of the windup is Fergus with the bases full of Broncos. And nobody out in the fourth. The pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Taking off for first is King, but the base is occupied. And there's one down. Here's Reno Shaparo, who struck out against Arnoldo Matos Garcia. And that was a nasty breaking ball that Fergus threw on that sequence. Wind and offering. Over but low with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Now the B-Diggers can get out of this inning without a run scored, perhaps with a double play. And the 1-0 offering. That is a little bit low. 2-0. and We've seen a lot of pitches barely miss, and it's more of a hitter strike zone than a pitcher strike zone. Two balls and no strikes to the DH. Now the pitcher, and that is low. 3-0. and To Shaparo. Man, it's been strange in this game. You've seen pitchers just lose their rhythm. That's a strike with a fastball down the middle above the knees. Three and one. Again, the B-Diggers leading by nine in the bottom of the fourth inning. And the offering. Swung on and fouled off to the right and out of play. Three and two to Shaparo. The B-Diggers will get at least another turn at the plate. But they'd have to win it in five innings in order not to get a turn in the sixth. 3 2 pitch. Oh, and the breaking ball, I think, might have grazed them on the helmet. I don't know why he threw a 3 2 breaking ball with a nine run lead. But a run scores. Clear across his home plate. There's Ryan Waite. And it's now 11 to 3. Yeah, you got to wonder about that. That's. Uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Wait. Walked in his first plate appearance. The pitch. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. The pitch is swung on and driven in the air to the second baseman, Gutierrez. He makes the catch. Barely had to move. Infield fly was called. There's two down. Nice job by Ryan Fergus throwing that clutch pitch. And he's done a very good job, even though he did issue a walk. And he can allow Platte Valley to score only one run if he can get Tanner Getman, who's 0 for 2 with a couple of pop-ups. The offering. Curveball is up and in. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, the breaking ball is good to throw, but you don't want to throw it on a 3-2 pitch. The offering swung on and lifted into left field. Backing up is Grayson Simmons. He's got room out there, and he makes the one-handed catch. And Platte Valley's threat 
is somewhat thwarted here in the bottom of the fourth inning. They score a run. No hits, no errors, and the bases were left loaded. We've had 11 stranded between the teams. Let's head to the fifth inning. It's Brush 11, Platte Valley 3 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Kyle Rosenbrock begins the fifth inning for the B-Diggers as the B-Diggers lead the Platte Valley Broncos 11-3. to It'll be Rosenbrock followed by Ryan Fergus and Nico Guzman. Brush has scored in every inning but the first. Five runs in the second, two in the third, and four in the fourth, but not a well-played game today. As Platte Valley's committed six errors, Brush with two. And the walks have come in big, big numbers here. Rosenbrock is 0 for 3. Here's the wind by Chapato, the pitch. Swung on and fisted on the ground slowly to third. Charging, fielding his way, throwing high to first. And that is Arendt. And off the side of the fence, it'll be a base hit anyway because he would have beat it out. So we'll give Rosenbrock the base hit. And he's now 1 for 4. Yeah, that was going to be a tough play over there at third. Even with a good throw, I think he's safe. As Rosenbrock got jammed big time. And Ryan Fergus will bat for the first time of the game. The stretch by Shaparo. And the pitch. Swung on and grounded a short. Getman to his right as it go underneath his glove into left center field. Rosenbrock to third. And that is air number seven on Platte Valley. And a very routine play. That'll bring up Guzman, who has struck out, grounded out, and singled. Nico officially one for three. As the B-Diggers are threatening to score once again. Here in the top half of the fifth inning. The stretch by Shaparo. And he pitched a Guzman runner going. Is inside off the glove of the catcher Smith, but not far enough to advance Rosenbrock. A stolen base for Fergus. One ball and no strikes. With two runners now in scoring position. And Nico Guzman has had a big season offensively. It's been over 400, 452 going into the game. Swung on and fisted in the air to shallow left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Fergus had to hold up. Rosenbrock will score on the RBI single from Nico. And the B-Diggers now lead 12-3 to in the top half of the fifth inning. And again, just looking to shorten this game is Brush. And Rene Cardenas now stepping in with his first plate appearance for Brush. And the pitch is up and in from the right-hander, Shaparo. One ball and no strikes. The stretch. And the 1-0 offering. Swag. And a miss. He took a huge swing and missed it. Count levels at one and one. The B-Diggers have 12 runs on 11 hits. They've committed two errors. No runs, or three runs on no hits. Seven errors for Platte Valley. Swing and a miss. Man, Godinus was about six inches away from hitting that ball. He's just pulling that left leg, and that was located towards the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. One in, two on. Nobody out. Runner goes to third. Swung on and grounded on one big hop to Barker at second. Flips to the second for one. To first, that's a double play. And... Yeah, Fergus was about to head to the dugout. I think he thought that was an inning-ending double play, and luckily his, the head coach's father, Kevin, told him, get back on that bag. Out number 16, Mikey Here's Mikey Gutierrez. Nice double play there, turn by Barker and Getman. And the pitch swung on and lifted into center field. Should be a routine play as... It's put away over there by Smith, and only one run is scored by the B-Dayers with a chance to score more. 
They take advantage of an error as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning in Kersey. It's brush 12, Platte Valley 3 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Brush 12, Platte Valley 3 as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. And the Broncos did a nice job of not allowing that second run because the B-Diggers could have played for the win in five, but they'll have to go at least six now. As Brush needed two runs, they tallied only one. And Zach Barker will begin the bottom of the fifth inning for Platte Valley against right-hander Ryan Fergus. He will step in for Platte Valley. He's walked and grounded out. He's 0 for 1. And the pitch is a strike with a fastball at the knees. It's 0 and 1. No balls and one strike. Wine and offering. Swung on and line towards right field to his right, making the play for the opening out is Zane Fowl. By the way, thanks a lot to the uh, Platte Valley moms and the... Uh, Platte Valley students up here. I don't think they're both, not both current, sorry. Current students, yeah. Tanner Schwent and uh, Eric Olson, yeah. One ball and no strikes. And Platte Valley, they have, uh, Platte Valley in recent years has dominated in football. And that pitch just bounces, bounces away. Of course, the B Diggers won the state championship this year. And they nearly met Platte Valley in the state championship game, but Ken Denver rallied late to win here in Kersey. But it's first it's the first championship for Brush in 20 years, and Platte Valley did win a couple of state titles, and they're swung on line into left field for a base hit, including the 2013 championship over Faith Christian. And it's a base hit, the first of the game, and it's hit by Isaiah Smith. Here's Christian Clear. Then, of course, there was 2007 when Platte Valley, I think it was a 12 or 13, and they beat Platte Canyon for the state championship. So Platte Valley, then they've made it to like four state title games in the last uh, nine years. Clear has popped out and walked the pitch down and in. One ball and no strikes. Clear officially at 0 for 1. No stretch, throw back to first, and back in diving. Temperature begins to drop a little bit as the sun has disappeared. And the offering, and that is an outside corner fastball for a strike to clear. The count levels at one and one. One ball, one strike, one on, one out, bottom of the fifth inning. It's brush 12, Platte Valley 3. Fergus stretches. Go back to first is dug out there by Hirschfeld. The stretch and the offering. And the curveball is a beauty for a strike. And as slow as this game is going, it's nowhere compared to what we saw with Brush and Valley. Over a three-day period, the B-Diggers lost at home 21-10, to then won at Valley 22-10. to Outside with a fastball, it's 3-1. and one. And again, there's one thing that will slow down a game more than anything else. It's pretty obvious that would be base on balls. And we've had a bunch of them in this game. The pitch including that breaking ball, which is inside. Oh, no, it's three and two. I must have missed one there. Oh, yeah, no, it was two and two and not uh, three and one. My bad. Three and two now. The pitch, that's up and in, and that's a walk. Smith, the second, clear. Draws the walk here for the left-handed hitting Clay Smith. Again, we'll have the Rockies just past the top of the hour. We might not go that long, but we won't be far away considering we've got to play at least one more inning in this game. And B-Digger pitching has now issued eight walks. The pitch, that is a strike on the inside corner with a fastball. It's 0-1. Platte Valley pitching has issued only six walks. 
So 14 walks combined and nine errors. And the offering and the curveball is outside. One ball and one strike. A yeah, very odd line for Platte Valley. Three runs on one hit, seven errors in the game. Three, seven, and one is usually more common than three, one, and seven. Outside. And even Fergus, like Maltos Garcia, struggling with his control. 15 balls, only 13 strikes. Two balls and one strike. The stretch and the pitch. That's outside. Three and one. Hey, this gets to be a habit, I think. When I get home for dinner, I'll just have whatever. I'll just order a ball since it keeps coming out of my mouth. 3-1 pitch. Swag. And I'm missing a fastball in the outer half. It's 3-2. and two. With Easton Fronick on deck. Okay. Peterson lays down the sign. He must be tired back there. And time is called as Smith was taking off for third. Brush is in the lead 12-3. In the bottom of the fifth inning. This makes up for the quick game yesterday. And Greeley, the pitch, swung on and foul back. Smith stays alive at 3-2. and two. And again, regardless of what happens in this inning, we will go to a sixth inning because it's only a nine-run advantage. Three balls and two strikes to Clay Smith. The stretch... And a pitch, swing and a miss, and a fastball above the letters. And Fergus with a strikeout. There's two down. Two official plate appearances for Easton Fronick. He's walked twice. Fergus looks back, and the offering, and that's upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, I don't have too many quotes. One quote I have is, there's nothing better than good baseball and nothing worse than bad. 1-0 pitch, swung on and driven in the air to left field, going back at Simmons, still going back towards the fence, and that ball's off the bottom of the fence on one hop. Smith will score. Racing to third is clear. He's going to stay right there, and it's an RBI double for Easton Fronick, and Platte Valley's on the board here in the fifth inning. It's brush 12, Platte Valley 4. There's Dylan King. He struck out his first time up. So Platte Valley's not going away. Still way down in the game, but able to pick up a run. The stretch, the pitch, swung on and fouled off to the right. That was about as late a swing as possible without hitting the catcher's glove with a bat. No balls and one strike, and that's in the dirt. And the count levels at one and one. Runners take their leads. One, one to King, and that ball hit him. Hit him on the lower left leg. And what do you know, the bases are loaded. For Reno Shaparo, he struck out and walked. I tell you what, if Shaparo gets a big hit here, this game would all of a sudden turn out to be somewhat competitive, which nobody would have thought coming into the inning. Shaparo officially 0 for 1. And the pitch swung on and popped up. Should be an easy play for the second baseman, Gutierrez. One step into the grass, makes the catch. And the inning is over. However, the Broncos not only pick up a run, but their first two hits of the game, no errors, and the bases were left loaded. We head to the sixth. It is brush 12, Platte Valley 4. This is 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. We head to the sixth inning in Kersey. The Bay Diggers lead the Platte Valley Broncos 12-4. It'll be the 9-1-2 and two hitters, Grayson Simmons. 
Followed by B.J. Hirschfeld and Zane Fow against the right-hander Reno Shaparo. Yeah, we had some good, solid, clean games that the Bead Diggers were involved in, especially yesterday, but this one has seen everything. The pitch tails away for a ball. One ball and no strikes. 14 walks, two hit batsmen, and nine errors, seven by Platte Valley. Outside. Two balls and no strikes. Simmons walked in his first plate appearance, reached on an error and a fly ball to the second baseman Barker, and then walked again. 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss way out in front of that changeup. It's 2-1. and one. Two balls and one strike to the B-digger left fielder. And the pitch. And that ball hit him in the lower back on a breaking ball. So that's the third hit batsman of the game. And that'll send up B.J. Hirschfeld, who has singled twice. Also reached on an air and grounded out. Again, the B-Diggers need at least two runs and have got to hold this team in the bottom half. Hirschfeld has driven in two in the game. The right-hander, Shaparo, stretches. Steps off, no throw. Yeah, more than likely, we're going to hit the two-hour mark, which is pretty long for a game that might only last six innings. And the pitch over the plate, but high. Throw back the first. Ball dug out by clear. Simmons is back in. One ball and no strikes. The starting pitcher was Zach Barker. And he allowed seven runs, but only two earned. Another step off by Shaparo. Ryan Waite was the second pitcher. The stretch and the 1 0. And that is a strike at the knees. One ball and one strike to B.J. Hirschfeld who has earned that top spot in the lineup with the way he's been hitting the ball this season. Kevin Fergus trying to find the right combination. The pitch swung on and grounded weakly to second. Barker to his right has got it. Flips to second for one. Throw to first will be late. And on the fielder's choice, Hirschfeld replaces Simmons at first base. And there's one down. One down for Zane Fow. Or check that. Aaron Williams, yep, will now hit. Now, now Williams yesterday was a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and stroked a double, went for third with nobody out and was thrown out at third base, and that completely changed the inning in the game because if he's in there, perhaps the B-Diggers tied and send it to the bottom of the seventh inning. So here is Williams, the junior. For all your banking needs, see the uh, folks at Bank of Colorado with locations across the northeastern uh, Colorado. Bank of Colorado, the way banking should be. Member FDIC runner going, and that's inside, no throw. Stolen base for Hirschfeld. And you have the option of selling your beans on the spot or storing products in the facilities at Trinidad Benham for future transactions. They're at 522-3595. That's Trinidad Benham. Williams, of course, had four RBIs. Against Sterling, very impressive performance a couple of weeks ago. And he swings and grounds it down the third base line and into left field. Wade tried to backhand it. The third is Hirschfeld. We'll call that a base hit. It was a rather tough hop there for Wade. And Williams continues his hot hitting off the bench. But here's a problem now for Platte Valley. And his name is Alec Peterson. Peterson hit a three-run homer. He's also been hit by a pitch, walked and popped out. Peterson at one for two. Stretch and pitch, runner goes, and that ball, did it hit him? It did hit him. Second time Peterson has been hit. Second batter that Shaparo's hit in this inning. And now the bases are loaded for Kyle Rosenbrock. You would think right now this is the shot for the B-Diggers. 
to break it wide open to the point that they take at least a 10-run lead. Out of the windup, the pitch swung on. That is popped up in the infield. An infield fly is called, and Clear makes the catch. And Kyle's just not seeing the ball very well. Or maybe he's seeing it, but just not connecting like he's accustomed to, and there's two down. And he was out in front of that changeup. Here's Ryan Fergus. And such a competitor is Rosenbrock, a little bit frustrated with himself. The offering, and that's in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. I have a feeling once we get to the playoff time, Rosenbrock is going to destroy the baseball like he has in past postseasons. Hirschfeld, Williams, and Peterson at third, second, and first. The pitch up and in, off the catcher's glove to the screen. Here comes Hirschfeld. He will score. The other runners advance, and the Beat Diggers now lead 13-4. to four. Now We're getting a little bit closer to the 10-run mark. But it's been a labor for Brush to get there. So now it has two balls and no strikes. The pitch, swing, and a miss, and a ball tailing away. Fergus still ahead of the count. At two and one. We've been operating with one umpire. The pitch, and that's upstairs. And Yeah, Tanner just indicated the other umpire showed up. Apparently he was operating on... Hawaii time. Three balls and one strike. The stretch and the offering. Swung on line to left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Williams will score around third as Peterson, and it's a two-run single for Ryan Fergus. And the B-Diggers now lead by 11. It is 15-4. to four. So now... Platte Valley's got to score a couple of runs as Nico Guzman will step in. And, <laughs> all right, this is hilarious. The other umpire is now here. Uh, this party started well over two hours ago. We'll have a courtesy runner at first. Uh, hopefully, he's, he hopefully got here late because... Something happened out of his control, you would think. So, and, and that could happen. I certainly don't want to judge. But now we have two umpires with two down in the top half of the sixth inning of the pitch. And the breaking ball's upstairs. Throw back the first. And back in standing as the courtesy runner. That I believe it's Mount over there. One ball and no strikes. Down and away. Yeah, that'll be Mounds heading to second on the wild pitch. And it is 2-0. and Two balls and no strikes. And the offering outside. 3-0. and Swag and a miss. Three balls and one strike to Nico Guzman. And the offering. And that curveball is inside and he walks. Yep. We have other people weighing in. Dignitaries weighing in on why the umpire was late. But I'll, uh, I'm the butt of a long standing joke. And the fastball is upstairs. Rene Cadenas is now the hitter. And the 1 0. Swung on in line towards center field. And a diving catch by the shortstop, Getman. Oh, a beautiful play by Getman in a game filled with errors by Platte Valley. Getman was able to make a spectacular play, and the inning is over. Three runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left. To the bottom of the sixth we go in Kersey. 
It is Brush 15, Platte Valley 4. This is 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Time to end this thing as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning in a game that has lasted two hours and five minutes. And, <laughs> and the Beef Diggers lead by a score of 15-4. Uh, to four. I'm having more fun uh, reading <laughs> my text than anything else. And this will be the first full half inning that we've got two umpires. I wonder if, if the... Uh, if this game is prorated, the pitch, I would think it's got to be prorated. If it's not, man, that's that's a lot of money for four to five outs of work. Ryan Wade has walked and popped out. Fastball is upstairs, 2-0 and from Ryan Fergus, the sophomore. Matos Garcia would get the win. He did go long enough, and Fergus would be credited with a save since this is his third inning. Fastball, a strike, took something off it at the knees. Two balls and one strike. The B Diggers have 15 runs on 13 hits. The pitch, swag, and a miss on a tailing breaking ball. It's two and two to the right handed hitting third baseman Ryan Way to his pitcher number two for Platte Valley. And the offering, breaking ball is way outside. Three and two to wait. And the pitch. He walked them. Pete's Farmers Cooperative have been in business since 1915. They're still a small-town company that cares about each of their individual customers. Pete's Farmers Cooperative. Yeah, Fergus went with a fastball, but just a little bit above the letters. And here is Tanner Getman. He's popped the first, popped to the catcher, and then flew to left. He's 0 for 3, the stretch. Runner goes. That is a strike to throw to second. It's good right there, the tag. And what's the call? He's out. Well, the the second base umpire looked towards the home plate umpire. I'm not sure who made the call, but it did look like it was the home plate umpire. I think he forgot that the uh, second base umpire was out there. Rosenbrock applied the tag, so the caught stealing goes two to six. There's one down, and the pitch swung on and grounded into left field for a base hit beyond the diving Cadenas, and Platte Valley picks up their third hit of the game. And again, right after this game, we're about 16 minutes away from Rockies on deck, so we will take you to Rockies on deck, the second of the four-game set. Rockies should do better than they did last night when they lost to San Diego 14-3, to the stretch. Pitch to Barker. Fastball is upstairs. Barker's walked, grounded out, and he lined to right. He's 0 for 2. The B-Diggers lead by 11 in the bottom of the sixth inning with one down. The stretch by Fergus, the pitch. Upstairs, 2-0. and Yeah, I'm certain in this game that we've had more balls and strikes thrown. Certainly the B-Digger pitchers have done that. And the 2-0, very high. Three balls and no strikes. Yeah, we've had... Yeah, about 14 more balls thrown by Brush than strikes. Throw back to first, nothing doing. It's 3-0 to Barker. Checking Platte Valley's. The pitch inside. It's another walk. Tenth walk issued by B-Digger pitching. Let's see if I can get Platte Valley's. Platte Valley, 69 balls and 75 strikes. They've actually... Yeah, they've they've done better than Brush. The Bee Diggers to this point have thrown sixty-two balls and only forty-eight strikes. The pitch squaring to bunt. It's a strike. Isaiah Smith is one for three, did single in his last at bat. Getman at second, Barker at first. The stretch and the pitch. And the breaking ball's down and away. Count levels at one and one. Mikey Gutierrez 
settling back into his position. I think he was backing up an anticipated throw, which never happened. And the 1 1 pitch squaring the bunt up and in off the glove of Peterson, but not far away for the runners to advance. Two balls and one strike with two on. And one down in the bottom of the sixth inning, and the B Diggers are holding a 50 to 4 lead. I say holding, but they're having trouble getting out of this one. And the offering swung on and foul back. It is two and two. They can allow one run in the inning and still get it over within six. Two would extend it to a seventh. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The stretch by Fergus and the pitch. And the breaking ball bounces in. Three and two. And on deck is the left-handed hitting first baseman Christian Clear. At second, Getman at first, Parker, 3-2. Swung on, line towards left center field. To his right is Guzman. He will play it on a hop. Around third is Getman. He's going to try to score. The throw is cut off by Hirschfeld. It's an RBI single for Isaiah Smith. And it's now brush 15, Platte Valley 5. As the trail runner, Barker advances to second. Christian Clear has walked twice and popped out. Are we going to go to a seventh inning? This is incredible. Bead diggers still need a couple of outs here. Fergus looks in for the sign. And the pitch. Swung on, driven deep to right field. Foul is way back. He's towards the fence. And it is gone. A three-run homer for Christian Clear. Four across for the Broncos in the bottom of the sixth inning. Brush 15, Platte Valley 8, and that ball was tattooed. Here's Clay Smith. We'll pick up Rockies on deck in progress. That'll be the game plan now. Wow. Unreal. Again, not like the 29-23 game. We had in 2006... Visit to the hill. i tell you, Brush has got to play a lot better than this. A lot better. Of course, they, they don't have any of their top two pitchers out there. They wouldn't against Platte Valley. But even establishing depth, it's not been good. Pitch to Smith. Low. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, there was no doubt about it. He got all of it. And that one is a strike on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Pitched by Fergus. And the breaking ball is a beauty. One and two to the left-handed hitting Smith, who has struck out twice and walked. And the one-two. Outside. Just off the plate with a fastball. So we've had two three-run homers in this game, one by Peterson a brush, the other by Clear of Platte Valley. The pitch, curveball called strike three. And that's only out number two that I've got up here. Is that three? I've only got that as a second out. That should be only two outs. Yeah, there are two. I don't know what people are doing here. We. This is the second time this has happened. That's only two outs. That is two down. There's two down. He should be back on the field. What What is going on here? We had this earlier in the game. I mean, it, that I was told there was no alcohol sold. You know, no alcohol sold. But wow. apparently and nobody knew except Tanner and Eric and myself that there were only two outs. In fact, I think the on-deck hitter for Platte Valley pointed it out. And we have two umpires, not one. Wow. This is a strange game. This is really odd. All right, so there's two outs. Now the bead diggers who are in the dugout. I've got to get back on the field. You know, let me tell you, 
That right there tells you how bad this game has been. On all ends. We don't even know. This is the second time that's happened in the game. But this time it was worse because everybody, all the bead diggers were in the dugout. Here's Easton Fronick, who has walked twice and doubled. He has one for one. Now the home plate and field umpire are convening at the plate. We played two hours and 14 minutes. All right. That conversation breaks up. We still have another inning of baseball. So Fronick hit an RBI double. Driving in a run in the last inning. The pitch swung on and grounded to third. Cardenas has it to his right. Sets, throws low to first, and the ball gets by Hirschfeld. Headed to second will be Fronick, and the bead diggers commit their third error. And the second one on Cardenas. That'll bring up Dylan King. He has struck out and was hit by a pitch. And now, by the way, the pitcher of record will be Fergus. you got to go at least four innings in a seven-inning game, and Baby did not do that. 15-8 to eight brush. It's in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chris Bull Brom was happy to call yesterday's game, and I'm happy to call this game, but... He got done a lot quicker. Swung on and grounded left side. Rosenbrock deep in the hole at short. Throws on the run, and that's a bullet ended off of Hirschfeld's glove on a perfect throw. Here comes Fronick. He will score. Don't know what happened there. Hirschfeld did not look in the throw. It's an error on the first baseman, and it's now 15-9. Wow. And here's Reno Shaparo. I do not know what is happening here. The pitch. This is not the brush team we're used to. Grounder, left side, Rosenbrock deep in the hole and short. We'll have no play. Throws to second. But that's going to be late. An infield hit for Shaparo. Let me tell you, this team is thinking that they got a shot this game. They're down by six. And Ryan Waite is now the hitter. Just shy of the top of the hour. This is 10-10 KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, Greeley, and KSIR.com. The fastball's upstairs as Waite is 0-for-1. He's walked twice and popped out. And the Platte Valley deficit was 11 going into the inning. It's down to 6. The pitch. Swung on and lifted into left center field. A long run for Guzman in the alley. Guzman still going, and he makes the running catch. Just shy of the warning track, and that ends a painful bottom of the sixth inning for the B-Diggers. Platte Valley is able to score five runs on four hits, including a three-run homer from Christian Clear. Two airs and two men left, and that was the third out of the inning. Let's head to the seventh. Brush 15, Platte Valley 9 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Diggers have a 15 to 9 lead in a uh, game that. We might have to forget sometime soon. As we head to the top of the seventh inning. And Reno Shaparo is out there against Mikey Gutierrez. Wind and pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball. Mikey singled in each of his first two at-bats. Reached on an air and popped out. He is two for four. Wind and offering. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball away. It's 0-2. And Rockies on deck is coming up in progress. Is that slated to start in three minutes? We won't be done by then. And the curveball is up and in. One ball and two strikes. An argument can be made. Brush actually played better yesterday than today despite not scoring. Called strike three, fastball in the outer half, and there's one down. 
We've had 11 errors combined in the game. 19 men have been left on base. And here's the G-man, Grayson Simmons. He's walked twice, reached on an error, and been hit by a pitch. The B-diggers are certainly much better than they're showing today. Strike on the outside corner. But again, Rush is a tradition of getting closer to the end of the regular season and playing very well, so no worries here. Swung on and grounded weakly to short. Getman has got it. Sets, throws, two down. As Grayson Simmons is retired. And it's B.J. Hirschfeld. We'll now step in for the B-Diggers. Now let's see if Ryan Fergus takes the mound in the bottom half of the seventh inning. I'm sure he's got something left in the tank. And the breaking ball is a strike. No balls and one strike to Hirschfeld, who is two for five with a couple of RBIs. And the pitch is a ball. Count levels at one and one. The offering in the dirt with a breaking ball. Two balls and one strike to Hirschfeld. This is his sixth plate appearance of the game. And we're in the top half of the seventh inning. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Early Toyota East will fit you in the car truck of your choice. Early Toyota East serving all of Northeast Colorado. A base hit into right center field beyond the lunging Zach Barker. Hirschfeld now has three hits in a game. And here's Aaron. Check that. It'll be Zane Fow. Fow is 0 for 2, popped out, walked, grounded a short and walked again. The pitch swung on and grounded a third. Wade has got it, sets, throws to first, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Let's head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Brush, 15, Platte Valley, 9, on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The new pitcher for the Bee Diggers is Jaron Peterson. As we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Bee Diggers lead Platte Valley 15 to 9 in a game that is approaching two and one half hours. In relief of Ryan Fergus, who went three innings, did a nice job getting out of that jam in the fourth that baby Matos Garcia got in. And now it's time for. Peterson to mow down Platte Valley here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Certainly not going to look like the most impressive victory for Brush. As Matos Garcia and Fergus combined for seven strikeouts but ten walks in the game. And the Broncos to begin the bottom of the seventh inning. We'll have Tanner Getman, Zach Barker, and Isaiah Smith at the top of the order. Peterson finalizing the warm-ups. When buying a mixer or feeder truck purchase, compare the MMI Design Crafts, Craftsmanship and Service, excuse me, MMI International. 842-5161. They outperformed their competitors. All right, here we go. Leading off I think I'm struggling as much as the pitching. MMI International, 842-5161. Here's Tanner Getman. One for four. He's popped out three times and singled. And the B-Diggers have a game coming up at 4 o'clock tomorrow against University. they got to play more like they did yesterday. At least pitching and defense, and the breaking ball's in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. We've had 24 combined runs, 20 hits, and 11 errors, and 20 left on base. And a combined 16 walks and three hit batsmen. The fastball's a strike on the outside corner. 
One ball and one strike to Tanner Getman. Here's the wine and pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt again. Two and one to Tanner Getman. Peterson delivers. Swung on, driven in the air to left field. Simmons is going back, still going back. He leaps, and it's over his glove and up against the fence. Getman around first. He's into second with a leadoff double in the top of the seventh inning. <laughs> they are not going away, folks, at all. And Zach Barker is in the batter's box for Platte Valley. They don't have seven hits. They didn't get a base hit till the fourth. Barker's 0 for 2. He's walked, grounded out, lined out, and walked. The stretch. Peterson delivers. And the breaking ball is a strike on the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. The B Diggers in the seventh did not score for only the second inning in this game. And the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball is in the dirt. Count is at one ball and one strike to Barker. Peterson lays down the sign. Barker awaits. And the offering. Swing and a miss and a fastball. One ball and two strikes. The stretch, the long pause, and the pitch in the dirt with a curveball, two and two. First pitch between the Rockies and Padres will be in 30 minutes from Coors. I think they're supposed to play a JV game. <laughs> they might not get much in here. Two-two pitch, swung on line to right center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Getman is around third. And he's going to be sent home, and he's going to score on the RBI single from Zach Barker. Brush, 15, Platte Valley, 10. Here's Isaiah Smith. He's two for four. He's singled each of his last two times. I mean, there was no way anybody thought, probably including Platte Valley fans, that there was a chance that this would turn out to be a competitive game. They're within five with nobody out. Pitch to Smith. Breaking balls a strike on the inner half. It is 0-1. Off of first is Barker. Jaron Peterson stretches, squaring to Bunny Smith. There's a lob to first. Back and standing is Barker. No balls and one strike. One across Platte Valley. Has scored in virtually every inning. Swung on line. Foul. Wow. Just over some Broncos there in the first base dugout. Platte Valley scored in every inning but the second. The B-Diggers have scored in every inning but the first and the seventh. No balls and two strikes. Barker with a three-step lead. The stretch by Peterson. And the offering in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Peterson's the only brush pitcher so far in this game that has thrown more strikes than balls. The stretch. And the one-two pitch. Curveball is tapped foul up the first base side. Count remains at one and two. Yeah, I know head coach Kevin Fergus. He cannot be happy about this at all. He figured this game should have been over. The beat digger should be... On the bus ride, back to Brush. And the 1-2. Outside with a fastball. That's a good take there by Smith. Count moves to 2-2. Two two. On deck is Christian Clear, who stroked a three-run dinger in the last inning. And the offering. Swing! And a miss and a breaking ball. And Smith strikes out. There's one down. Clear is one for two with a couple of walks. And the B-Diggers are two outs away from a very ugly victory in Kersey. 
Throw back to first, back in standing as Barker. You can follow this pitch by pitch at KSIRsports.com and see how we got to this point over this two hour and 31 minute stretch. And the pitch, and the breaking ball is down and away. One ball and no strikes. Short lead at first for Barker. And the 1 0. Low. Took something off of that one. Two balls and no strikes. Live in your world, learning ours at Northeastern. For more information, go to njc.edu. Swag and a miss. And Northeast Colorado's locally owned hometown savings and loan with locations in Fort Morgan, Sterling, and Brush. Equitable savings and loan with financial solutions for you. Throw back the first back in diving is Barker. And when you're shopping for new appliances, shop the best appliance store in Fort Morgan, B&B Appliance, a full and complete line of Whirlpool appliances. B&B Appliance grounded foul up the first base side in downtown Fort Morgan. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one on, one in. Bottom of the seventh inning. The B-Diggers lead the Platte Valley Broncos in Kersey, 15-10. to Platte Valley came into the game with a 6-7 and seven record. B-Diggers at 9-3. And, and the pitch. In the dirt with a curveball. Three and two. Oh, at least the weather's perfect. Three, two to clear. And he bounced it in there. And the Bee Diggers have issued their 11th walk of the game. The first by Peterson. Here is Clay Smith, who has struck out three times and walked. I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm Smith and I've struck out three times, I'm a hitter. I bunt it down the third baseline. Godinus is behind the third base bag. The stretch. <coughs> and the offering in the dirt with a breaking ball. Both of these catchers have been incredible today. Isaiah Smith and um, Alec Peterson. One ball and no strikes. Games like this, normally you see about five or six wild pitches. I think we've seen only a couple. And the offering. Swung on and lifted into shallow center field. That one might drop. Guzman is coming on. He can't get to it. It's a base hit. And the bases are loaded. Now a late break and getting back to third is Barker. He thought about scoring, which would have been insane. And that will send up Easton Franick, who's walked twice, doubled, Reached on an air. He's one for two. This is unbelievable that Platte Valley has the tying run on deck. But that's the reality. I mean, you might have to bring in one of your big guns either. Well, Guzman probably unavailable because he pitched yesterday. You might have to bring in Rosenbrock here or B.J. Hirschfeld. That's if Peterson cannot get this hit out the stretch. And the offering. Swag and a miss. A very sharp breaking ball. It's 0-1. This is the same team in Brush that beat Resurrection Christian 4 to nothing. The number one ranked team in 2A with some great pitching. And the offering. Curveball is over the plate for a strike at the knees. Two excellent pitches thrown by Jaron Peterson. It is 0-2, and, and the sophomore showing his grit right now with the bases loaded. And the 0-2 to Frannick. Swing and a miss and a fastball up and in. He threw some major heat. And there's two down. Man, Peterson went at him with reckless abandon. Dylan King has struck out, been hit by a pitch, and reached on an air. There's two down and the base is loaded. That was the best sequence Peterson has shown in this inning. Stretch and offering, and he throws it low. Kind of short arm that one. One ball and no strikes. With two down in the seventh inning, the Beat Diggers lead 15 to 10. And the pitch. Fastball is up and away. Two balls and no strikes. Barker at third. Clear at second. Clay Smith at first. 
And the 2-0 to Dylan King is a breaking ball for a strike on the inside corner. Throw back to first. Back in diving is Smith, and that barely got the corner. That certainly could have gone either way. Here comes the wind again. Let's end this game quickly before it might get out of hand. Peterson has to step off. This is a wind, a type of wind we saw just before the game was slated to start. It came with some rain as well. Two balls and one strike. The stretch by Peterson. And the pitch. And he bounces it in, skips away. And the other runners were trying to advance, but no way Barker was going to take off from third. And that's a smart play. Why even run? Wouldn't make any sense to run because that would only make it a four-run game, especially with a 3-1 count. Reno Shaparo is the tying run on deck if King can reach. Three balls and one strike. The stretch and the pitch over but low. Dylan King walks. Barker scores. Brush, 15. Platte Valley, 11. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable. And here is Reno Shaparo. Stretched by Peterson. And the pitch. Swing and a miss and a sharp breaking ball. Shaparo one for three in the game. Struck out, walked, popped out, and singled. Peterson looks like he's back on track. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Same pitch, same result. It is 0-2. Now one pitch away are the B-Diggers from finally winning this game. And the 0-2 to Shaparo. Swung on and lined. One big hop to Rosenbrock. Sets. Throws to first. In time! And Rosenbrock throws out Shaparo deep in the hole. And the Brush B-Diggers have finally won the game by a score of 15-11 to as Platte Valley tallies two runs in the frame. Let's take a two-minute break. Back in two minutes. The Beat Diggers win 15-11 to 11 on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran back at Platte Valley High School in Kersey. The Beat Diggers finally won the game over the Platte Valley Broncos 15-11. to 11. Beat Digger post-game show is brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center in Sterling Brush in Fort Morgan. Your farm and ranch headquarters for all your farm and ranch supplies. They carry feed for all your animals and pets. Mr. D's Ace Home Center. 15 runs, 14 hits, 4 errors, 11 left on base for Brush. 11 runs, 9 hits, 7 errors, 12 left on base for Platte Valley. The winning pitcher in relief was Ryan Fergus. And the starter, Zach Barker, took the lost time of the game 2 hours and 38 minutes. As Platte Valley got on the board first without the benefit of a hit in the first inning. But the B-Diggers came back in the top of the second inning. As Alec Peterson capped off the five-run frame with a three-run homer, Brush was up five to one. They made it six to one in the third inning on an error, scoring Adnoldo Matos Garcia. Brandon Walter also scored on an error, making it seven to one. Zach Barker came through with an RBI single at the bottom of the third as Platte Valley made it seven to two. But then the B Diggers were able to score two more runs. In fact, how about four more runs? Alec Peterson scored on an error. Brandon Walter with an RBI single. And then B.J. Hirschfeld with a run-scoring single. He drove in two in the game. Zane foul with a bases loaded walk. And the B-Diggers were on their way to winning this game in five. They were up 11-2 to two going into the bottom of the fourth inning. Reno Shaparo came through with a run-scoring single for Platte Valley, making it 11-3. to B-Diggers tallied one in the fifth inning. And Nico Guzman drove in a run, making it 12-3. to three. Back came Platte Valley in the bottom of the fifth inning. Easton Frannick with a run-scoring double. It was 12-4. to four. And then Brush scored three runs in the sixth inning. B.J. Hirschfeld scored in a wild pitch. Ryan Fergus with a two-run double. But then in the bottom of the sixth inning, Platte Valley exploded as Isaiah Smith had an RBI single. Christian Clear with a three-run homer. And they scored another run, making it 15-9. to B-Diggers were held scoreless in the top of the seventh and the bottom of the seventh. An RBI single by Zach Barker. An RBI walk by Dylan King. And that was it. As the tying run in Reno Shaparo was at the plate, but he grounded it short to end the game, and the B Diggers win 15 to 11. The B Diggers improved to seven and three in Patriot League play, and they are 10 and three overall. Platte Valley six and eight on the season. They dropped to three and six in league play. The B Diggers are back in action coming up tomorrow, four o'clock from Brush against University right here on 1010, as well as KSIR.com. 
momentarily we will get you to uh, Rockies on deck with the Rockies taking on the San Diego Padres as we will pick that up in progress. Sound engineer and producer of Brush B. Digger Baseball has been Michaela Klimper. She'll be with me tomorrow, hopefully for a shorter game. Final score, I'm John Beltran. The Brush B. Diggers defeat the Platte Valley Broncos 15-11 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.